What's up, everybody? My name is Ryan Thomas. I am a sports journalist based in Buffalo, New York. This is my sports podcast, the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. It's actually turning into the Thomas Take Variety Podcast, Variety Show, um, slowly but surely. I've been talking about more topics now more than ever. Obviously, uh, politics, the 2016 presidential election, it's the last thing I want to talk about. What I want to talk about tonight, though, if you do want to check out my stuff on Donald Trump and the 2016 election, feel free to check it out below um, on the episode track list. Um, but what I want to talk about is UFC 205. I was just joined by David Poole. I'm going to post more from myself and David Poole momentarily. But I have a lot to talk about myself, about UFC 205, that sometimes I don't always get off to uh, getting that stuff, to, you know, I don't, I don't always talk about the stuff that I want to, it's real easy to get sidetracked when you have a guest on the show, um, but definitely I'm going to post that stuff, excuse me, with me and Dave uh, momentarily. If you checked out the title, um of the of the episode and if you're listening live title is you can't hit what you can't reach and it's the career of conor mcgregor um this is a podcast episode that the mcgregor fanboys out there are gonna have a tough time listening to it but i feel that this is what i am made to do i'm made to dissect things analyze things for what they are and I'm I'm here to bring up points that not many people have. And they're points that resonate with me. They're points that I think of. Um, and they're points that are valid. So here we go. Conor McGregor is now the UFC lightweight champion and the UFC featherweight champion. Defeating Eddie Alvarez via TKO in the second round at UFC 205. I... Watched the fight, obviously I watched the entire card, and mo the moment I knew that the fight was over was within the first 20 seconds. Eddie Alvarez could not touch Conor McGregor. Every time he tried to, he left himself very wide open, and that was a part of the fact that he was reaching for shots, reaching for punches to be landed. McGregor was flat-footed and was still able to land shots. You can see this in pictures as well. In pictures of Conor McGregor versus Eddie Alvarez. In pictures of Conor McGregor versus Chad Mendez. In pictures versus Conor McGregor and Diego Brandao. And in pictures versus Conor McGregor versus um, Chad Mendez. Uh, maybe I did. I already say Chad Mendez. I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. But let me go over the list with you guys right now. Uh, Conor McGregor, 28 years old. He has a 74 inch reach advantage. Versus Diego Brandao, he faced an opponent in Brandao who had a 68-inch reach. Uh, 68 inch reach. Um, so 6-inch advantage for Diego Brand for uh, Conor McGregor versus Diego Brandao. Um, versus Marcus Brimage, McGregor had a 3-inch reach advantage. For Chad Mendez, McGregor had an 8-inch reach advantage, 66 to 74. Versus Jose Aldo, Aldo carried a 70-inch reach, and McGregor carried a 74-inch reach. Versus Nate Diaz, the one loss in the UFC for Conor McGregor was versus Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz had a 76-inch reach, 2-inch reach disadvantage for Conor. And versus Eddie Alvarez, Eddie Alvarez had a 5-inch reach disadvantage, 69-inch reach versus Conor's 74-inch reach. You can't hit what you can't reach. And obviously the fact that Connor has that style where he puts his hands apart, moves side to side from left to right, changing stances from orthodox to southpaw, this aids Connor McGregor. This actually adds an advantage on top of an advantage where he's able to land his best punch, which is the straight right, or which is the straight left, excuse me, and he lands that quick um, right hand. And that's what he landed um, on Eddie Alvarez, landed a couple quick right hands and spades during the fight, and then landed another four-punch combination that sent Eddie Alvarez down. And those punches, the punch that exposed Eddie was one punch. And if this doesn't show that Connor had a massive reach advantage, I don't know what will. But Connor landed four punches to Eddie's one off of Eddie's one punch. Four-punch counter. 
Um, so what I'm saying is, you know, Conor McGregor is a great fighter. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. He's obviously very talented. He's the real deal. But what I am saying is it's very easy to do that to guys that you are much bigger than, that you have a much bigger reach against, that you have a clear advantage in the fight that actually gives him an advantage at every facet of the fight. Given that he has that reach advantage over his opponent nine times out of ten, it actually forces fighters to not shoot because they know that if they shoot, that'll leave them even more exposed if they shoot for a takedown, and McGregor can clip them. Um, Jose Aldo, the fight with Jose Aldo, obviously he won that fight in 13 seconds. Can't take anything away from him there. But the fact that Jose Aldo charged in right after him, leaving his chin wide open for McGregor to throw a short left hand and send Aldo crashing to the canvas. wasn't the hardest shot. It was the fact that Aldo was completely wide open and exposed. And McGregor, what was he doing in that highlight? He was leaning back. He was leaning backwards. What was he doing against Chad Mendez? Chad Mendez had his back to the cage. He landed that left hand that sent Chad Mendez down. Same fight with Diego Brandau. Um, he landed a, sk- a spinning back kick, uh, or a spinning uh, head kick on Diego Brandau that rocked him. And Brandau was at least five, six inches shorter than Conor McGregor. So it was like he barely had to even lift his leg up to land that kick on Diego Brandau's head. So, you know, I'm not trying to dissect and say that he is a bad fighter. Obviously, he's a great fighter. He's made the most of the opportunities that have been given to him. But within those opportunities, he's had a clear advantage in virtually every one. And if you watch that second Nate Diaz fight, five people would say he won the fight. Five people would say he didn't win the second fight with Nate Diaz. If you asked ten people, it would be split. Five for Connor, five for Diaz. So what's next moving forward? Habib Nurmagomedov had a dominant victory over Michael Johnson. Habib Nurmagomedov is ranked in the top three at lightweight. Um, will he fight Conor McGregor next? He should fight Conor McGregor next. He's 24-0, and and he's been in the fight game for quite some time. He's not past his prime. He's only entering his peak performance level. He's had some injuries over the course of his career, and now he is healthy, and now he is firing on all cylinders with that win over Michael Johnson. So is it Habib Nurmagomedov's time? I would say so. I would say, without a doubt, it is Habib's time. Um, Tony Ferguson is an option. He won nine fights in a row. Is it his time to fight Conor McGregor? It remains to be seen. I believe that Conor McGregor will not fight Habib Nurmagomedov purposely. I believe that Conor is actually already starting to run from the prospects of fighting Habib Nurmagomedov, knowing that he has a very realistic shot at losing one of his two belts. The featherweight belt is completely irrelevant to me, because I do not believe he will ever fight at featherweight again. Dana will not let him fight Nate again. That fight wasn't supposed to happen the first time. It sure as hell wasn't supposed to happen the second time. The only reason why it did was because Connor lost, um, and they wanted to give him a rematch. But I don't think Dana White is too cra- too keen on the idea of Nate Diaz fighting Connor again, which is a real shame. That's a fight that every fan wants to see. The third fight should happen now. If it were up to me, it would happen already. Um, There's no harm, no foul, but they fear the fact that they could lose their biggest draw, and and they are protecting their biggest draw. For anyone to say that they're not, they are, without a fact. It appears to me as if anyone he fights, he will have a clear advantage, examples in size, and obviously big fight experience. That was Eddie Alvarez's first main event on the pay-per-view stage in his UFC career. That was McGregor's like sixth or seventh main event in his UFC career. So, you know, though that does play of you know a play a part, play a role in the fight itself. Connor needs to stop trying to call out Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley would kill him fast 
If they were to fight each other at 170 for Conor's quest for a third belt, Woodley is one of the strongest fighters in the UFC with the exception of Anthony Johnson. That fight would not go well for Conor McGregor in the slightest. Woodley hits too hard, he's too tough, too durable, and his wrestling is unlike any welterweight currently in the in the UFC. And that's why he's the champion, even though he did beat Stephen Thompson via draw. Um, I'm not even mentioning Dennis Seaver. I'm not even mentioning how Conor McGregor actually got a title shot for beating Dennis Seaver. Um, and and I'll, I'll put that um, on here. I want to see what Dennis Seaver's reach was. I'm going to look that up. Um, Dennis Seaver's no bum. I'm not saying that Dennis Seaver's a bum, but He's definitely not 70-inch reach. A 4-inch reach advantage for Conor McGregor in that fight. That's a big difference. Um, He was way too big for the featherweights. That's why he had such an easy time at featherweight. And his only lightweight fight that he has won, he actually had a better reach advantage against Eddie than he did against Dennis Seaver. And Eddie is a lightweight. So reach matters. It, It matters. I can't say that Conor is the greatest of all time, Due to the fact that he fought Chad on two weeks' notice, and he actually lost a round, Chad opened him up, took him down at will, and Chad had an 8-inch reach disadvantage. And Chad got gassed because of the rate in which he was taking Connor down. Um, obviously, the Diaz fight. He fought Nate Diaz on 11 days' notice with a full camp. Nate Diaz was on a boat in Cabo smoking weed and eating brownies. He tapped out Connor in the second round. The second Diaz fight. Again, if you asked ten people who won, five would say Connor won, and five would say Diaz won. So it is what it is. For me to say that Connor is the greatest of all time, for anyone to tell me that Connor McGregor is the greatest of all time, I laugh at that. I think that that's hilariously ridiculous to say that he is the greatest of all time. I could name five guys, ten guys. I'll name five for the sake of it, but GSP, Anderson Silva, BJ Penn, um, obviously John Jones, when he can keep his nose clean, um, Matt Hughes, um, Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, Vitor Belfort, Uriah Faber, I'm talking about the greatest of the greatest. The guys that actually won titles, fought contender after contender, number one contender after number one contender after number one contender in the the realm of GSP and Anderson Silva and John Jones, and defeated those number one contenders every single time, nearly every single time. Um, Actually, you know, obviously every fighter has an uh, has a uh, end, but. Connor has never defended his. Connor has never fought a number one contender to this very minute. Connor has never fought a number one contender in his entire UFC career. When will he fight a number one contender? He has yet to fight the number a number one contender. You can't say Chad Mendes was a number one contender because he had just lost to Jose Aldo. So Chad Mendes was like the number three contender. Um. It just he's never fought a number one contender in his entire UFC career. And I think that trend is gonna continue. I think he's gonna hold off, let Habib and Tony fight each other for the number one contender spot, and wait with his two belts. Let Habib and Tony fight for the number one contender spot. He'll fight the winner of that fight, and I don't see either of those fights going well for him whatsoever. I know this is going to unleash some hellfire, because there are some real diehard McGregor fans out there. But the fact that nobody has even taken this into consideration, he's fought tiny men over the course of his career. The one guy that he didn't fight that was tiny was Nate Diaz, and Nate Diaz beat him one out of two times. Maybe some would say two out of two times. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take. Thanks for listening.